What's going on, wonderful people? Today we've got Xabi Alonso's perfect 4-2-3-1. Yes, he did use us at the start of the season and somewhat to the middle of the season. This tactic went 47 games unbeaten. I had to get it done. I love Xabi Alonso. I love a 4-2-3-1. And I love providing you guys with the latest tactics. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It is completely free. Let's get into the testing. It's going to be a big one. First up, and you guessed it, we didn't go invincible like they are probably going to in real life. But nearly, one loss does get in the way and that is going to come in against a very weak team. A little bit frustrating, but we do win 31 games and draw the other two. Victor Boniface turns up to the max with 43 goals. Boniface, Fringpont, and Holzek get in the average rating in first, second, and third. Grimaldo with 24 assists, Teller with 17, and Florian Burtz with 15 big ones. It is going to be Harideki with 17 most clean sheets as well. So pretty much every single part of the football game, we are absolutely dominating. Now, stat-wise, we are going to be featuring the most points per game, the most goals at 147, which is phenomenal, the most shots at 744, the fewest shots against at 199. Most clean sheets, we're going to be in first place joint with Bayern, and fewest conceded, we are going to be just, just behind Bayern in terms of that when it comes down to 30. So, I mean, overall, not too bad defensively. Possession-wise, we're going to be up there with 56% of the ball, but overall, the real attack and prowess of this tactic is absolutely demonic. I mean, close to 150 goals, by the way, which is ridiculous scenes. The data hub is also going to paint a very similar story. A 4.32 goals scored per game, only 0.88 conceded, over 21.8 shots a game, an 88.88, all the eights coming out there for the pass completion, and a very tidy tackle win ratio. You love to see it. Super League final now, look at this for a first goal. To Stegen is not going to want to see that again. Absolutely diabolical from the German there, and it's not great here from Barcelona either, as we are going to engage with a bit of press. Palacios into Holzek, who makes it two inside of 26 minutes and you know what fair play to them they get their heads up and they do get a goal here I was not worried though because I know how good this tactic is and one little goal like that is not going to bother me and you know what it didn't we scored before half time of a set piece again be sure to download those and we are going to make it 3-1 and there's time for one more in the 83rd minute tap sober Xhaka into Holzek the star man of the game back into Palacios Pluck that one out. But yeah, the only thing we didn't win is going to be the Pocker, where unfortunately we matched up against quite a good team in Dortmund. But for a general season, with Bayer Leverkusen, we'll take it. But obviously, he managed to Real Sociedad B team. I went and done it with the main team. I thought it would be a bit more of a challenge. And to be honest, it wasn't. We absolutely dominated the Spanish League, only losing one game against Atletico Madrid, which we don't talk about. We don't talk about that game. I don't know what happened, but we're going to ignore it. We're going to move on. It is what it is. It does sometimes happen in Football Manager. But overall, we had a very, very good time. 32 wins, five draws, despite that one fluke game. God knows what happened. We are going to also pick up the top goal scorer, second and third when it comes to the average rating. Mendes and it is going to be Adri Zola in first and third and second place with the most clean sheets. And that is also having one game where we conceded eight. Now, team stats, it is going to be very convincing. The most clean sheets, the fewest conceded, which, funny enough, we would have won quite convincingly bar an absolute onslaught from Atletico Madrid. The fewest shots against at 243. The most shots at 690. The most goals at 121. And the most points per game at 2.66. So really, a really good convincing season. Data hub wise, of course, we are going to have a little delve into it. It's going to be 3.18 goals a game, only 0.79 conceded, over 18.1 shots a game, an 89% pass completion, and a very high, actually nearly 5% higher tackle win ratio than obviously the previous team, 79.25. It's going to be the only trophy of that season. The Champions League runners up, to be fair, but we do lose against Man City just in extra time, so a very good display, and this Spanish Cup we don't talk about. And of course, the team he played for and the team he was expected to go to, that is not going to happen now, as we are going to see a very good season from Liverpool, the mighty Reds. Only one loss there coming against Aston Villa, which is a little bit annoying, but 31 wins and six draws. I think we'll take that any day. Second and third with Salah and Diaz picking up 28 and 24 goals. Mo Salah, the best player in the league, and McAllister, the third best player of the league, based off the average rating. First, second, and third when it comes to the most assists, being Trent in rank one. Just showing again, the impact on that right hand side the fring pong roll make sure you've got a very good right back because you need one to really thrive in this system allison with most 20 clean sheets as well we love to see that and going over to the stats most points per game at 2.61 most goals at 129 the most shots at 790 the fewest shots against at 200 the fewest conceded at 20 and the most clean sheets at 21 every single element including quite a decent amount of possession to be fair we are absolutely taking over world football you absolutely love to see it 
it. Now, data hub, we are going to look, see how good we are. 3.39 goals per game, only 0.53 conceded, over 20.7 shots a match, an 88.86 pass completion, and a very good tackle win ratio. I mean... I really am. I'm trying to find faults with this tactic. The only thing's the 8-0 defeat, which we're not going to never discuss again on this channel. God knows what happened. That was with another team. That's in the past. This Liverpool team, incredible. Two English Cup finals to show you now. I'm going to show you whether we win them or lose them, just to show you actually how we perform in these big games. And we get off to a flyer of a start there against Leeds in the Carabao Cup. A bit of an easier team to face. A goal in the first minute and another goal coming in here inside of five minutes. Just beautiful play. You can see how good we are on the ball on the edge of the box there. Very quick to bring it inside as well as now 24 minutes on the clock McAllister down the right hand side pause right here we have got so many options in that box it's unreal a great ball in from Trent and a fantastic header from Diaz to make it 3-0 in 24 minutes 28 minutes on the clock now so not long played and this is going to be four goals being scored Trent on the ball so much confidence into Jota to make it 4-0 and at this point Leeds may as well have gone home but they stick around and they shouldn't have done as we are going to wrap up the game here in 5-0 fashion before the 39th minute dominance. And now the FA Cup final against bitter rivals Manchester United and as you can see we got off to a great start with some beautiful play inside of 22 minutes to make it 1-0. A great start for the lads now. Graven Birch into Thiago into Darwin Nunes. A little bit of scrappy from the Manchester United defence. Where have we heard that before? As it is going to be a wonderful finish from McAllister to make it 2-0 before half time. Robertson a set piece in the 60th minute back stick into Canate, download the set pieces, they're absolutely incredible, Robertson, little one-two there to Thiago, into Jota, inside, beautiful, 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 into Salah, absolutely phenomenal scenes, one more goal now in the 95th minute, I don't know why there was so much out of time, into Endo, into Jota, to wrap up a very convincing final, of course now to the tactic breakdown, it would mean the absolute world, if you could leave a like on the video, and be sure to subscribe, it is completely free, and if you want to get your hands on all three of these tactics, you want the Merly, you want the mobile, and also the console version, you want priority in your request, you want one-on-one -on -one tactical help, you want the rebuild files we do on the second channel, you want the rebuild priority request, you also want access to the giveaway, which at the moment is over roughly around £250 in prize equivalent. Sometimes we do gift cards of that money or we do prizes. This month is a mixture of both. So do come over. The link is going to be in the description. You can join the Patreon. There's over 4,000 people. So Come get involved. The community on there is absolutely incredible. Now, the goalkeeper is going to be set to defend. The complete wing back on the right is very, very important. In fact, I'm going to say it. The most important player in the team in terms of getting it right in FM. So, complete wing back on attack, dribble more, run wide, and tackle harder. He's also going to have these other four instructions by default. So, very important you've got an incredible right back because it is influential on the team more than you can imagine. Now, a ball playing defender on the right and the left are going to be exactly the same. Now, I will say in real life, I would actually argue that Grimaldo plays very similar to Fringpong. They're both very attacking. In this 4-2-3-1 in the game, it was a little bit too much. So we've gone with a wing back on dribble more and tackle harder. Feel free to trial it though. Have two complete wing backs on attack. But I will say, for me personally, I noticed a lot of weakness when we have both of them flying forward. A deep line playmaker comes in on support, on tackle harder and mark tighter. Next to a register, which is nice to use for a change, a tackle harder and also mark tighter instruction. So, quite a tight marked midfield. The inverter winger on the right, which by the way, the reason why he used to play this system is to actually cater for Nathan Teller. Obviously, then he reverted to that 3-4-2-1. But he did deploy this at the start of the season. So I thought, Do you know what? He's a big name at the moment. It's quite a lot of fun to play his style. Let's get it done. It's going to be an inverter winger on support on get further forwards as is the left hand side as well the floor inverts of the team is going to be an attacking midfield player on attack on take more risks dribble more and move into those wonderful channels and lastly the advanced forward on attack simply set to dribble more so a basis of a tiki tacker on the positive mentality we are going to go down too fairly narrow we're going to pass into the space we're going to overlap left overlap right sorry i clearly don't know my left and right overlap right to confirm while playing out from the back very important we do this and i have focused a lot on the fring pong and if you really want to get the most out of fring pong you can also add this on focus down the right but for me just having the overlap option really got him stuck in a lot of the time so that's all you really need we saw in the liverpool highlights as well how often the play was down down the right hand side with the likes of Trent for example a shorter passing directness match with that higher tempo be more expressive and those mixed crosses transition we're going to play to the center backs while rolling the ball out with counter and counter press on so again when we lose the ball we're going to be very aggressive winning the ball back and when we have got the ball 
we're going to counter. Obviously, out of possession, we are going to go with the high press line of engagement, the high defensive line, step up more, get stuck in, prevent short goalkeeper distribution, and more often on the trigger press. Now, you might be saying, Josh, hang on, why Tiki Taka? He's more of a counter-attacker manager. We've gone down the counter-attacker approach in the in-transition and the way we've set up the team. The Tiki Taka is to make sure we're, you know, doing nice, quick Tiki Taka passes on that counter, not going direct route one, because that is one thing he doesn't do. Now, to attack, to go and score more goals if you need to do so, or you're trying to get back into a game this is going to be a bit more of a buffed up version of that default tactic so it's going to be a goalkeeper set to defend a complete wing back on the right is going to be exactly the same the wing back on the left has changed now to an attack and option on dribble more run wide and tackle harder two ball playing defenders remain exactly the same the deep line playmaker comes in on support on tackle harder and mark tighter and next to him is going to be that register bit more buffed up now on dribble more get further forwards tackle harder and mark tighter so again the same role a lot more aggressive the inside the inside for the inverted winger on the right and on the left are now going to have a bit more buffed up versions as well both on support still but on take more risks get further forwards and run from the position we introduce a shadow striker into the mix on shoot more often mainly to cater for someone like florian verts because he can have a crack at goal if your player hasn't got good shooting you can remove that shoot more often but i still would recommend having that shadow striker and the advanced forward remains unchanged once again tiki taka on the positive mentality we are going to look to go fairly narrow we're going to pass into the space play out from the back we're going to overlap left and overlap right on this occasion get both of the wing backs involved we're going to run at defense and be more expressive with the mixed crosses and the tempo is still going to be maxed out with a shorter passing directness transition we're going to have a few things selected counter press counter distribute quickly and take short goal kicks not selected an area meaning it can go to anyone on the back line the midfield or the flanks out of possession we are going to go with that much higher defensive line with the high pressing line of engagement step up more get stuck in prevent short goal can be distribution and of course much more often now to defend those games out and when i say defend it's still going to be able to score goals just going to be a lot more possession focused so it is going to be a goalkeeper on defend a wing back on the right and the left are both going to be set to the default as are two ball playing defenders so a very sort of risk-free back line now i will say the wing backs by default are going to get further forwards but they're not going to be too aggressive to the point where they're not going to be going and getting as many assists as like a fring pong they're not going to be as attacking as a fring pong they're going to be more of a composed option for the back now we then have a dm on the right on tackle harder and mark tighter and a ball winning field player on mark tighter on the left hand side as well who by default automatically has tackle harder on anyway now on the right hand side we are going to have an inverted winger on support on tackle harder and mark tighter as we are on the left hand side an attacker midfield player on support on take more risks dribble more and move into the channels and if you're saying josh why are you having a player take more risk in a defensive tactic that is because this tactic is classed as defensive tactic but I want the players still to be able to create chances. I want the odd risk taker in the team because there's nothing worse than having everyone behind the ball and you're literally creating absolutely nothing. You need to be doing something. And with Xabi Alonso, his defense still translates to attack. So that is what I have tried to do. And the advance four does remain unchanged. This time, Tiki Taka on the balanced. The balanced mentality, fairly narrow, pass into space. We are still going to overlap right. So we do have the occasional run from the right back. We're going to play out from the back with the much shorter directness with that slightly higher tempo we're going to be more disciplined and we're going to have mixed crosses so we are still going to attack we're still going to have chances we're just going to be a lot more sensible about when we decide to fully commit transition nice and simple we're going to roll the ball out now to eliminate any risks playing to anyone across the back line with the counter and the counter press and lastly despite whatever variant you need to have the higher line with the high press and line of engagement prevent short goal could be distribution and more often that is going to complete for you boys and girls back at home three variants why have i put up five fingers Three variants of the Xabi Alonso 4-2-3-1. A ton of fun making this. I love this manager to bits, man. I would do anything to have him at United. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications. It is completely free. Again, come and join the Patreon. We've got over 4,000 people, over 13 perks. You won't regret it. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll be seeing you in the next one.